This is a bit of an unusual video series, but I thought I would include it because some of you might find it interesting. It has nothing to do with electronics, it's actually about this vehicle. I purchased this about five weeks ago, and the reason I bought it is I have to move a lot of material around because of uh, my home and where I live. I'm always carting things around and um, using a wheelbarrow or a uh, garden mower with a trailer was getting a bit tiresome. Um, so I was looking for a utility vehicle. Now these are normally fairly expensive and um, I didn't really want to spend a whole lot of money on one of these. They usually cost uh, maybe £10,000. Uh, you can get them cheaper but all the second-hand ones tend to have a lot of issues and they uh, usually end up spending another few thousand pounds getting them working. Now I saw this one advertised, but it didn't look like this. Have a quick look uh, around it. And you can see it looks to be in reasonable condition. But this is after a total of around 250 hours work. Excuse the road noise. So when I got it, it was in terrible condition, didn't run, had a uh, flat tyre and uh, the engine uh, needed a lot of work. Transmission was locked up, the brakes were locked up, all the plastics were completely uh, pretty much destroyed by the sun. Uh, so it's taken a lot of work to get it into this condition. In fact, uh, I still have to do the roof yet. If we look at the roof, you can see that's the condition that all the plastics were in. Um, but I've been restoring all the plastics and um, it's now pretty much at the point where I can start using it so what I thought I would do is kind of start at the back of the video so this is the after and uh, what we'll do now is we'll rewind the clock about five weeks and we'll see what was delivered and uh, the work I had to carry out to get it into this condition these videos are not meant as a, an in-depth, detailed review of how to restore one of these or how to do the work. I'm just really very quickly uh, going through the various steps I had to go through to get the machine into a usable state. So, it's not electronics. If you're not interested in this sort of thing, then please feel free to skip these videos. So I hope you can hear me over all the wind noise, it's a bit of an unusual project I'm about to start. I won't be going into too much detail with this, this is just a bit of a, an aside I thought you might, uh, or at least some people might find interesting. So I um, quite often have the need to move things around because of where we live and uh, I have been using a trailer and uh, kind of garden tractor arrangement but it's not always convenient and it tends to be fairly slow. So uh, I bought this, got it um, off uh, I listed that on eBay and you can see it's a small petrol powered um, utility vehicle. Uh, it's been sitting outside for quite a number of years as you can see. And it's just been dropped off and um, it's going to take a bit of work to get it up and running. But it should be quite uh, interesting, quite useful once it's done. Um, but as you can see it needs an awful lot of work to uh, make it uh, really serviceable. But um, if you're interested in this sort of thing then let me know. I'll uh, include a few videos as I go. So it's the next day and uh, yesterday afternoon I started cleaning it and um, the first thing I want to do is see if it's actually uh, possible to get this running. Clearly there's a lot of work needs doing on it and especially looking at the wiring somebody's really been hacking around don't know what they were chasing whether it was a run issue it's quite a complex uh, set up on this machine, much more so than you'd expect. Uh, but what I've done, as you can see, taken a lot of the plastic work off, started having a look at the engine. It's a single cylinder 300cc 20 horsepower engine, and um, I checked the oil, and there was none showing on the dipstick at all, kind of down there somewhere. And uh, so I filled that up, held about half of the total capacity, so it wasn't completely dry and uh, took the plug out, made sure it wasn't hydrolocked, put some two-stroke mix in the top end and um, made sure there was no shorts on the uh, wiring anywhere. Most of the wiring is unplugged so somebody's clearly been chasing something and um, 
check for spark and surprisingly it does have spark and um, I was a bit surprised I wasn't expecting it I assumed there'd be a safety cutout somewhere that somebody was trying to fix it's the usual thing that people look for on something like this um, but no it was sparking didn't know if it was sparking at the right time um, so what I did is uh, dribble a bit of fuel into the carb intake the intake pipe was disconnected which again is a bit worrying I think somebody was chasing a non-run issue and uh, cranked it over with a key and it uh, fired up idles quite nicely it doesn't make any horrendous noises as yet but it will not rev up if you try and uh, go anywhere near the throttle it backfires pops wheezes and uh, then dies so um, as you can see I attached a mini fuel tank on a tube because when I disconnected the fuel line going to the carb it's got electric fuel pump turned on the key and what came out was most certainly not fuel it was thick brown kind of like mud so uh, after the carb is probably full of that and uh, I suspect the main jet is blocked and uh, the idle um, circuit seems to be working which is quite unusual uh, but as I say go near the throttle and it uh, backfires and dies so that's the first thing I want to look at so we'll get the carb I'll remove the carb we'll get it onto the bench open it up and have a look inside I suspect it's going to be full of um, something other than petrol well I've got the carb opened up and sure enough um, that's not what it should look like inside it's uh, obviously completely gunged up I've got no idea what this stuff is uh, but it shouldn't be there so um, the main jet is completely blocked there's absolutely no way this was going to run I'm surprised the engine even idles and um, in fact it idles very well I'm just very surprised um, that nothing else works so I'll get this taken apart we'll get it into the ultrasonic bath give it a really good clean and uh, hope it uh, will start working it's not the correct carb for the engine so I don't even know if it ever ran with this carb on it looks fairly new so uh, I don't know if it's ever uh, been a feasible car for this machine, so um, we'll have to try that. Unfortunately, they have, whoever did this, re they removed the uh, intake. There's an adapter uh, that converts from a flange to a, a kind of circular mount, and that's gone. And they've made up this uh, mount, which uh, I will modify. Uh, it needs cutting down to a sensible uh, shape and size. They just left it. Um, in whatever size they cut. Quite, it fits quite nicely but uh, it's the wrong carb for the engine so I don't know how well this will work. Uh, also in the carb, this is what came out, it's mostly water and um, again it's supposed to be petrol but once you get water in the float chamber of a carburetor, especially a small engine, there isn't enough suction to suck that up even if it could go through the main jet which in this case it can't. Um, it probably wouldn't get sucked up because um, water's just kind of too thick to go through these small orifices. So I'll get this cleaned up and uh, we'll go from there. So I've completely stripped the carb. It's spent, uh, most of the parts have spent about an hour in the old sonic bath. And um, they must have came out really clean. There was a huge amount of sludge. The bottom of the ultrasonic bath is about half an inch of sludge now, but they've come out really clean took quite a bit of um, effort to get some of the parts cleaned up there is some corrosion at the bottom of the main jet um, boss but shouldn't cause a problem now despite being in the uh, bath for probably over an hour um, about an hour and a quarter I think it was the main jet was still completely blocked so eventually I got this um, cleaned out and all the jets are now clean had this weird arrangement on the side of the carb it's a uh, universal carb I think that's uh, been fitted like I said it's not the right one for the machine and it had this thing I think it's for some alternate throttle arrangement but um, I've taken that off don't need that so um, I've uh, disposed of that it just gets in the way I've also modified the mounting plate made it a bit uh, smaller and neater and um, also um, flattened it it wasn't completely flat so prob probably wasn't sealing anyway so that will now go on um, all the other bits cleaned up nicely, um, all the check balls were stuck, so there's an injector pump um, on this machine, on this carb, and it was completely stuck, it wasn't um, doing anything, not surprising considering the amount of dirt that was in there, and uh, so I've got those out, cleaned them up, I've uh, polished up the 
needle valve seat so that will hopefully uh, stop. One thing I didn't say earlier was that um, when I try putting fuel into the, um, the intake uh, for the float chamber I just got fuel dripping out the bottom, there's supposed to be a pipe on the bottom here that leads somewhere safe but it just drips out onto the engine so I need to put a bit of pipe on there. Uh, so it drips out underneath the machine, not onto something that's likely to set fire to the, uh, the machine. Um, and it just fills up, overflows, and that's because the needle valve was sticking. Uh, okay, so I'll get all this reassembled, we'll get it put back into the machine and see if we've made any progress. Like I said, what it was doing was it would start and idle, but if you went anywhere near the throttle it would backfire and pop and then die. Uh, incidentally, this is the fuel that was in the... Um, fuel tank, this uh, kind of brown sludge that came out, so not surprising. It's mostly water, uh, most of what's in here is just water, so um, as I say it's been standing outside for several years and the fuel tank just filled it with water and also because the um, the pipe between the carb and the air cleaner was um, not fitted, um, I think water was getting into the carb as well. Luckily it doesn't seem to have got into the engine but uh, only time will tell, we'll have to see how well it Certainly idles nicely, but uh, we'll see what happens once we get all this reassembled. That's the carb reassembled, refitted to the mounting plate, and uh, I'll get it fitted back onto the machine, and we'll see if it actually works now. So I've got the carb refitted to the machine, and I've just guessed at the mixture uh, position. It's uh, one and three quarter turns out. Um, unfortunately it's very difficult to get to, it's underneath the carb so um, hopefully it's going to be close enough for it to run. I have been cleaning up and tidying up the machine, I've removed the air filter for now so I can get better access to the engine. Changed all the fluids, so I've changed the engine oil, the primary gearbox, the secondary gearbox and the axle oil. I've been uh, working on the brakes as uh, they uh, just are completely seized up, the master cylinder won't move. And um, I've been removing a lot of wiring as uh, any machine of this age, uh, as it uh, goes through its life, people tend to add things to it and modify it. And this is no exception. In fact, this one must have had a real uh, wiring party at one point. There was a huge amount of uh, additional wiring on this that I didn't want. So I've removed that. It's now sitting there. And um, there's all sorts of things on there. There was a, a tracker on there, an old fuel pump, all sorts of stuff that was in there that uh, hopefully isn't needed for it to run. And uh, now we've got it up to this point. I've had the battery out. I've checked it, recharged it. That seems fine. And um, next thing is to try and start it. Now, before it would start, it would idle, but as soon as you went near the throttle, it would backfire and pop and then it would die. Uh, so what I've got here, I've got the uh, fuel tank hooked up. In fact, I've removed the fuel tank. It normally sits in this space down here, but it uh, was absolutely full of um, like mud and all sorts of stuff. Um, in fact, I've pressure washed this machine now probably four times and just mud keeps coming out of it, mud, stones, all sorts of things. So I don't know where it's been, but um, it's uh, gradually getting cleaner. It's in much better condition than I first thought, um, but we'll try and get it started. I've got a temporary fuel tank hooked up, small uh, temporary tank and uh, should be enough for it to start and run. Uh, the good news is the fuel level in that is not dropping so it looks like the needle valve is working fine in the float chamber and so we'll try and get this started up. I have checked all the wiring, it did have spark, like I said it did idle um, but hopefully it will now rev up. So we'll try and get it started. Well it fired. There's a piece missing off the exhaust as you can see, but uh, a bit rattly, but that is kind of the nature of these engines, uh, 300cc single cylinder, the two tend to rattle a bit. So we'll see if it will now rev up, it's uh, idling but it did before, so it's going to hit the throttle, you probably can't see what I'm doing, but... Okay, well, it appears that it runs. I don't know if it will move. 
the gearbox is frozen I can't uh, select any gears so um, I'll need to work on that next that's down here I have changed the fluid but um, I just wanted to make sure the engine was uh, viable before I went any further so okay onwards and upwards so I'll continue working on it uh, cleaning up as I go and uh, anything I find I'll correct hopefully um, as I progress and I'm um, hoping before too much longer we'll have a working utility vehicle the master brake cylinder was locked up solid the brake pedal wouldn't move so I took the cylinder out and luckily this did free up I've uh, taken the uh, plunger out and had a look and all the seals are good nice and clean inside it was just this top section uh, was completely seized up so I've taken it out um, given it a good inspection got it freed up given it a clean changed the seals and uh, this can now go back in and I need to replace the hoses that go up to the um, reservoir cylinder because they're perished and uh, split so there's no point putting those back on um, but I can now get this refitted okay that's the master cylinder refitted reconnected to the pedal I just need to now uh, fit some new hoses between the cylinder and the reservoir and then the next step is to take off each wheel have a look at the brake linings um, slave cylinders and then bleed the brakes I've been working on the winch and unfortunately the winch motor is fine that works but it, the winch has been overwound whoever wound this in I think they just left the cable and it was uh, snarled up and doubled back on itself and formed loops but they, they just kept going and they wound it tighter and tighter and then it was left for I don't know 10 years and it was a rusted mass of tangled cable and it just would not uh, turn back. It, I couldn't even release the uh, uh, the rotor. It just wouldn't turn. And so I had to cut the cable off and uh, cut it into uh, quite a few uh, different pieces to get it off. Um, but it wasn't recoverable anyway. It was too badly kinked and corroded. So I fit a new cable. Uh, that's not a particularly big issue. And um, I'll get it cleaned up, get it put back together, and I can get it refitted to the machine. I removed the fuel tank, flushed it out, there's about an inch of sludge and rust in the bottom of it but it's cleaned up nicely, it's quite clean inside now and uh, so I'll fit a new uh, fuel hose, two filters, one between the tank and the pump and one between the pump and the carburetor. So that will be the fuel system done and um, hopefully then I can move on to the next job. The next thing I'm working on is the jacking screw for the tilting rear of the machine and uh, it's electric, uh, sometimes the hydraulic, this particular one is basically an electric uh, jack screw and uh, unfortunately I didn't get any shots of this when I first took it apart uh, simply because I didn't think it was going to be possible to uh, recover it the uh, machine was parked in the field for 15 or 20 years and because of how it was parked uh, this jacking screw mechanism filled with water and it's been basically full of water for over a decade so the inside when I tried to get this apart was just solid packed rust this is one of the bearings out of it and this is after cleaning for about two hours in the ultrasonic bath uh, just to see you know, how bad it was but it was literally solid packed rust so I didn't think it was going to be possible to uh, get this uh, operational in fact getting it apart was a bit of an ordeal because of the way this is assembled uh, the uh, magnet uh, outer uh, housing slides over the rotor and the brushes are at the far end so the way you have to get this apart is to remove the uh, end cap first then you can slide this off and gain access to the inner workings um, but this would not come off it was well and truly bonded or rusted to the end of the uh, motor shaft so I had to drill a hole in, you can see a hole in the end of this so I could drive the um, motor shaft out of the bearing and then get the bearing out the bearings themselves um, I, ha I had to kind of break them apart to get these out of the housings they were absolutely solidly packed with rust so sorry for that didn't get any shots uh, before um, halfway through cleaning this it is starting to clean up fairly well and um, it looks like it might be recoverable I can't find anything um, electrically faulty in here it's just uh, I'm going to have to of course replace all the bearings so there are four bearings, the two on the jack screw itself 
and then there are two on the uh, motor so I'll replace all those and uh, hopefully we can get this uh, functional again but uh, I had kind of written this off so apologies for not getting any before shots on this I'm back working on the tipping jack and uh, got it cleaned out as much as I can um, as I said this was absolutely solid packed rust and I'm just um, amazed that it's come back as well as it has uh, I think what had happened here as well is that uh, it was solid packed rust just would not turn the bearings were uh, seized up solid and um, I think it was switched on at some point and just left and what had happened is the a brush holder had melted. This is just plastic and uh, it melted. The brushes were in here but it was just kind of a, a molten blob of plastic and I had to spend probably about an hour um, excavating this, chiseling it out and getting the brushes out without destroying them. And uh, there was no way to repair this. Um, it's just as I said, a piece of plastic and uh, it was well beyond its uh, kind of sell-by date. Uh, so what I did is made up a replacement and uh, made it out of uh, a piece of uh, PCB material and uh, some brass sheet and uh, gone overboard with the solder. I want to make sure it's um, not going to melt and uh, these uh, brush holders drop off. And um, a typical brush holder, it's just a, a slot that uh, the brush sits in. So the brushes uh, slide in and out of these slots. And um, the only thing I've got to do now is find some replacement springs. The originals, um, again, almost completely destroyed, and these are no good. So I need to find a couple of springs. Once I've done that, I can start to reassemble the unit. The rest of it has come up uh, fairly nicely. The rotor has come up very clean. I've cleaned the commutator and the uh, screw gear on the end. Got a replacement set of bearings for it. Got the originals there. You can see they're not really... Uh, any good for anything and um, I'll just find some springs get this reassembled uh, incidentally this thing fits on here so it uh, clips into place and um, it's quite a nice fit it's actually better than the original so it should work quite well and also I hope will be a bit more reliable so I'll get this reassembled and we'll give it a run see if it works I found a couple of suitable springs got those fitted and as you can see, it all fits together quite nicely. Good uh, spring and brush pressure, so I shouldn't have any problems with that. And hopefully this one won't melt. That's the unit fully assembled, greased up, and it works. I've tried it. It runs out. It stops where it's supposed to. So the limit switches still work. It runs in, stops where it's supposed to. So I'd call that a success. Uh, Sometimes I'm quite surprised. When I first opened this up, I would have given a 2% chance of this ever working again. And um, so I think it's quite a, a nice result and it is quite satisfying to bring something back that's so far gone. And uh, we'll have to see if it's got the power to actually tip the uh, trailer once it's full. Another item that's been putting up a fight is the gearbox. It's a fairly simple gearbox, it's got two forward speeds, high and low ratio, and reverse. And you can probably tell this sits on the front of the rear axle. As the prop shaft comes up, feeds uh, power into it here. And there are two selector uh, forks, and this goes to the uh, gear shift mechanism through two heavy duty cables. And um, this just would not change gear. You could get it to kind of change gear but you had to be really vicious with the gear change and really force it to uh, to move and um, it was initially seized up uh, solid and I it was just the rust when I drained the oil out of this it just came out as brown sludge and uh, it also been filling up with water wherever it had been sitting um, the rear axle wasn't too bad that had fairly clean looking oil in it but this looked really bad and um, I kind of thought it would be seized up and completely destroyed at first, but once I'd uh, changed the oil, run it around a bit, it cleaned up fairly well. Um, but I still had a problem, it was very difficult to get into any of the gears. And uh, finally decided to take it out, uh, freed up the slides. So the way this works is you've got the gears uh, down in the bottom of the box, and the selector, there's a selector fork here, you can see the top of it, and another one here. This is for the two forward gears, this is for reverse and 
Um, it would also have a habit of locking up solid, so uh, nothing would turn at all. And it's usually a sign it's going into forward and reverse gear at the same time. So these two um, screws here, they're basically cup uh, bolts, so there's a big spring in the centre and they are supposed to push on a uh, ball bearing and uh, they are used as uh, indexers or indent uh, control for the two rods. Um, but it turned out what had happened, I think somebody had it apart before, and the ball in, uh, that should be sitting in this tube was actually sitting in, it kind of dropped into the space at the end of the rod, so this rod wouldn't move all the way across. And um, the rest was just uh, very badly uh, corroded. Cleaned it all up, put it back together, but it was still very tight, much more so than I would have expected. And um, I'm not sure why, I t the springs that are in here are extremely stiff, like you can barely compress them. So I've made up these two bushes, you can see these two aluminium bushes, to reduce the spring uh, pressure on the uh, indent balls. And uh, that's made things much better, it now shifts quite nice and uh, freely. The other thing that was a bit odd is the locking up uh, issue. And um, there's a, a kind of a lockout between the uh, forward and reverse gears. So as with the um, indent balls or the index balls, there's a cutout on this rod about there and another one on this rod about here. And this ball goes all the way through. And, um, but there was nothing in there. It was just an uh, open uh, space and I figured there should be something in there, but I didn't know what. Um, I fit, and then I measured this and it seemed that the ideal thing to go in there will be two balls the same size as the ones that were on the index um, uh, the fixtures. So, but there was no balls, I assumed they'd been lost. But uh, because the ball in here had dropped in, I assumed somebody had had this apart and maybe they did the same thing with the balls out of the interlock. So, turned the box upside down and after about 10-15 minutes of um, tapping it and shaking it and tilting it and rocking it, uh, one of the balls fell out and reappeared and uh, carried on another five minutes, the second one fell out. So, had both balls, reassembled it, the interlock now works, you can't put it into forward and reverse at the same time, cleaned it all up, I've now refilled it with oil and uh, this is now working. The only other issue I had was with the, uh, there's a big plate that's on top of this, I'll just grab that. So that's this plate and uh, this sits on top, kind of sits like that. And uh, this is what the two uh, cables attach to. On the other side there's this uh, switch arrangement um, the switches are broken. This was very badly bent up at the end. Um, I pretty much strained it out on the hydraulic press, quite thick gauge uh, metal. So uh, this hangs down uh, underneath the machine. I think at some point it had kind of been run into something fairly hard and it had bent this back. So I strained this out but it smashed the switches by the look of it so I need to um, replace those and also figure out how they're wired in. Somebody bypassed these switches, so it shows on the uh, dashboard of the machine, it shows it has been in neutral all the time. And uh, that signal comes from, or supposed to come from these switches. It's also supposed to control the cranking of the machine. You shouldn't be able to crank it unless you're in neutral, but at the moment uh, it's been bypassed with a wire going straight to the uh, ground terminal of the battery, so you can crank it whatever gear it's in and so that needs to be fixed. I just need to figure out how to wire this up and how to integrate that into the uh, wiring loom on the machine. So I can now reassemble this, um, get it put back into the machine, get it wired up and hopefully it will be a step nearer and uh, it will be easier to uh, get into gear. Similar arrangement by the way on the um, gear shift mechanism with two very stiff springs and some um, indent uh, uh, balls which I'm going to reduce the force on. They're just way too uh, aggressive and it makes it very difficult to get into gear. Um, but this is now hopefully going to be recoverable. Um, they're quite expensive so I don't want to replace this if I don't need to. And so uh, we'll move on to the next job.